Man, this mic picks up weird stuff. Oh, hello, folks. I'm the one, the only, I'm Hobo Tom, and I want to make this quick so I can get some sleep. I've not been sleeping well as of recently, or I haven't been sleeping that much, and that's not good. I'm probably eating a whole plate of chocolate cake. It's not going to help my sleep, although I did get a lot of naps today. I don't care what the overlord says. Naps are good. Um, Sarah, and if you don't want to see a picture, because I think actually sometime either the end of August, I might do another react food reaction and combo video. I have to figure out what I want to do. Oh, it doesn't look like much. Yeah, look at that delicious, yummy chocolate cake I made. Like super dark chocolate. My Chinese chicken. That actually looks really good. That was good. Um, eventually, I know Taco Bell, they've taken away the Frito burrito and replaced it with like a grilled cheese burrito. I think I could do better. So we'll see. But let's not talk about that. Let's talk about some pro wrestling. Mainly, let's talk about Monday Night Raw. And of course, as always, whenever I start a show, I always thank yous to give. Boring corn, man. I have to figure out what I'm going to do with you because I think eventually I'm going to have to make you into the Daytona Beach bump fight. So let me go to my list. The list of hobos. You know what, Born Corn? You're getting there. You might be a character soon. Maybe you might even challenge for the under the under the bridge belt. But you, sir, are Nikki Cross's tag team partner? And Carlito, you sir just beat the count because you only got it to that six count.
And now let's talk about a Vince Russo, I mean, overbooked Raw. Because, wow, is there a lot of stuff going on. Some good. Some not good. Some just weird. So let's get to it. Uh, starts off, Randy Orton cut like an 11-minute promo. I was a little bit late getting back from the gym. I went late. I just took a nice long nap. The weather kind of had me bummed out. And Randy, I just came back from the house. And Randy Orton's like 11 minutes into a promo. So I have no idea what started before that, but I'm pretty sure it wasn't much. I sent her a picture of chocolate cake. Women do like chocolate cake. She'll appreciate that. And then all of a sudden, Nia Jax comes out when Randy Orton leaves, and Shane and Basil just have a fight. Wow, that's probably the safest Nia Jax worked in a while. And it's good to see Shane and Baszler back on TV. And this starts off, and then we finally have our first wrestling match. 20 freaking minutes into the show. Um, that's not good. That's never good if you have a wrestling show and a lot of people talk. I don't mind if you're going to have a lot of people talk over 20 minutes. At least it feels broken up. I just like the way Impact Wrestling does it better. A quick two minutes. And then wrestle. I like that. Like SmackDown did that too. I think they had like a like two or three people give a five minute talking segment, but it felt quick and broken up. It's not so much the cinematic display that is Lucha Underground, or was Lucha Underground. Well, WWE is getting dangerously close to that, but still, it just seems long. So our first wrestling match, we have a triple threat match. We have Ricochet and Cedric Alexander taking on the Viking Raiders, taking on Angel Garza and Andrade. And they said that this was going to determine the SummerSlam uh, challenges to the Street Profits. And I took a quick glance on my calendar. SummerSlam's like, in theory, WWE has been known to change their plans. SummerSlam still a freaking month away. Like it's not even August yet. So we'll see what happens. Um, starts off. The one thing I liked about this, Cedric Alexander and Ricochet's ring gear match, Angel Garza's and Andrade's ring gear match, and the Viking Warriors look like Viking Warriors. So I like the fact that they're making their tag teams look like actual teams. They have them, for the most part, somewhat coordinated. Finally, someone in wardrobe is doing their job. Starts off very quickly. Angel Garza and Andrade jump everyone. Um, they get... And Angel Garza, when he rips his pants off, tosses them to the Street Profits. Dirty person! That's how coronavirus is spread. Although, if he's from the Daytona Beach area, coronavirus is the least of your issues. Uh, Cedric Alexander, he's a quicker, but of course, Ivar, he's also very agile, too. Now, we're kidding, Cedric, they double-team Ivar a lot. They also go after the, actually, Ricochet and Cedric and the Viking Raiders, then go after Angel Garza and Andrade, who are just, like, chilling out outside the ring. They're like, hey, be tranquilo. Actually, we heard Andrade... In this match, say tranquilo. Tranquilo. I like that. Los ingomorales. El hilo. Uh, let's see here. Then it was... So they see them. Andrade gets beat up in the ring by Ricochet and Cedric Alexander. Because Angel Garza is getting beat up by the Viking Raiders. Then they flip-flop. So then uh, Garza and the Viking Raiders outside, they're beating him up. Viking Raiders throw him in the ring. Ricochet and Cedric Alexander throw Andrade out of the ring. Ricochet and Cedric go after Andrade. Viking Raiders go after Angel Garza. Uh, then Ricochet and... It was Ricochet versus Eric Rowe of the Viking Raiders for a little bit. Then Andrade mysteriously teams up with Ricochet. They work over... And the much bigger, stronger Viking Raider almost makes sense. And then he first has something he says, Tranquilo. 
So that was always good to see. Uh, Ivar is just too strong. Ivar just uses a weapon so much too. Ivar, he just did like some like super dive outside the ring, took out everyone. I, Ivar doesn't care. Uh, Cedric Alexander is the one who eats the wing clipper from from Angel Garza. So that means already for SummerSlam. So that means they'll have. I guess there's six men. <laughs> Four. So there's eight possible different matches between now and SummerSlam. So we'll see what happens. I'll say what. People poo poo the triple threat match. With these three teams, though, they make it work. So this was, this was, I was shocked. I'm like, oh, is this going to be a good Raw? Because this, I'll tell you what, this was a surf and turf match. But then my hopes were very quickly dashed because Shannon Baszler and Nia Jax was next. It's, it just looked like a shoot fight. They went to the outside. I think it only took like two minutes to go to the outside and there was a 10 count. And then, of course, uh, Shannon Baszler at least choked out one of the Security people, enhancement talent. Nia Jax beat up the WWE official. Um, this was a piece of toast. I don't even care about that. So already within the first hour of Raw, we've had a really good match and a god-awful match. And I'm like... Uh oh, we're on that roller coaster ah! ride of the WWE again. Uh, then there was the Ray and Seth recap. Uh, Murphy and Seth then came out. Uh, let's see here. Then backstage we have Ruby Ray and Bianca Belair who weren't who were not featured, but they did have an amazing, for the most part, an amazing women's match. I don't like the ending, but I'll get into that though. Um. So Ruby Riot and Bianca Belair, I guess, are going to be a tag team. Maybe. Who knows? And they're back there with Mark Henry. Mark Henry's in town. Mark Henry, a good guy. Then we have Seth Rollins comes out. He calls out Dominic. Um, Dominic actually just comes out, jumps Seth and Murphy. Of course, they beat him up a little bit. Officer Black. I'll tell you what. Dominic can take a bump. I applaud you, Dominic. Your daddy taught you well. Your daddy taught you well, Dominique. Oh, yeah. Of course, that's uh, coming from the late great Dusty Rhodes. Baby. So Dominic, he can take a bump. He got tossed against the barricades. He took him like a pro. He took it the right way. He did the safe way. Good for... He's learning. I like that. Um, then Alistair Black came out trying to try and make the safe. Seth's sick. Murphy on Alistair Black said, take his eye out. And he, Seth, Murphy's like, what? Uh, me? Um, do I really have to take his eye out? So I said, do it. Do it. Do it, you wuss. Well, then called him a, well, almost called him a wuss. But yeah, eventually, Murphy did take the eye of... Officer Black, so that'll be interesting. And it was weird because it was a lot less bloodless than what happened before, I guess, because Officer Black forgot to stick a pack of ketchup in his trunks. So then in the back, we have R Truth and Ali. Our... <sighs> what, what was the R Truth called? Mustafa Ali? Mufasi. Yeah. Archie's called him like Mufasa Ali. I'm like the Lion King, and Ali's like staring at him like, You're... if it wasn't our truth, it would be weird. Then Ali is on the MVP show. He's like, and MVP says, Hey, join us. And Ali said, No. So you know what happens? He gets beat up, baby. Because next we have Ali taking on Bobby Lashley, sweetheart. And wow, Bobby Lashley's vicious. He has that amazing delayed vertical suplex. Wow. I mean, even though Bobby Lashley was kind of prancing around the ring trying to get his balance, I mean, 
That's still a pretty big feat, holding another grown man upside down, literally in like the crook of your arm. I know Ali's supporting himself on his shoulders. That's still no easy task. Ali is... He's, he's smaller than Lashley muscle-wise. He's only a couple inches shorter, though. I mean, he's long and lanky. Ali has some amazing core strength, folks. And then on the outside... We were surprised because Tozawa tried to roll up Shelton Benjamin, who was there, with, with a Hurt Foundation, with a Hurt Squad, whatever they're called, or Hurt Incorporated, uh, Pain Incorporated, I forget what they call themselves. Um, but Shelton Benjamin, he, he, kicked, he kicked out of that because he went to kick out 102, how to kick out of roll-ups. And he just threw Tozawa somewhere, and then just come up, Benjamin was tossing them back and forth. Even Bobby Lashley took out the ninjas. Because there was an impromptu match. This match is actually going to get a double rating. It's going to sound weird. But it will make sense. So now, Ali gets back. He does a suicide dive onto Bobby Lashley after Bobby Lashley took out all the ninjas. Go to commercial break. Come back. Ali's on the apron. Lashley just like shoves him. And then... Toss. It literally tosses Ali into the post. And the thing that Bobby Lashley does where he kind of like picks the guy up in a fireman's carry and creams him head first into the post, that looks awesome. Because he did that to a ninja. He wants to do that. He just like lawn darted Ali into the post. Again, that's pretty impressive too. Uh, let's see. Yep. And then Ali had his comeback. Although that was stopped short by an elevated flatliner. You know, Ali, when he's on his feet doing he's and fast, he had, he had the edge. When he let, when he slowed down the pace, it doesn't work so much. I mean, he did hit a satellite DDT. He went for the pin. There was no 450, not the 054 anymore, because I guess, I don't know. It's the 450. Because um, then. And then there was no arm drag to counter that. Lashley just stuck him in the full Nelson. And whoa, did he tap quick. I'll tell you what, that referee, he didn't see the tap. Because you can see it's like, okay, okay, no, let go, please, please. Oh, my, ah! Let go, please. So Bobby Lashley wins. Shelton Benjamin retains his title. This is a double rating. And just because it's a double rating, we have... The Shelton Benjamin segment. What's this? Oh, wow. You haven't seen these in a while. The ham sandwich. The Bobby Lashley match over here. That's a good old-fashioned cheeseburger match. So we have our ham sandwich inside of a cheeseburger. Indeed. It's always nice to bring up. Old, old graphics. Old production value. So some of the best stuff. And um, then we have Dolph backstage. Uh, Kabuki Warriors, Asuka, and Sasha recap. Uh, then we have Sasha Banks versus Asuka. This is going to be a very divisive match because it's, it's a, uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in this match. And as I get to it, first of all, Kyrie Sane chases off Bailey. That's good. Because I figured what was going to happen, there was going to be some kind of wonk finish. We'll get to it. But the wonk finish would have been Bailey slaps Sasha Banks. Therefore, Asuka gets DQ'd and Sasha wins the belt. Because remember, this is the one way like champion wins by DQ, count out, pinfall, submission, or any other nefarious or, or any other means. So it's a wrestling match, but you can win by getting can the there is no champion's advantage. You win you can win by count out, pinfall, submission, uh referee's discretion. Disqualification. So it was I'll tell you what, it was a good match. It, is, it was traded drop kicks. Asuka hit the hip, hip attack and those kicks. Oh those kicks on Asuka. Tell you what, Sasha Bank was rubbing her jaw. Uh, hung back, actually, like, shit, something came loose. Yeah, Sasha Banks, though. Dude, she takes some bumps. 
but she and it, she she does some selling. It's like she's gonna be the next Dolph Ziggler and like just like concuss herself again. She's done that before in the past. She's just not safe for herself. And there were a couple boshy moments in the smash. Yeah, mainly with Sasha Banks. She's not. She's never been the smoothest wrestler when the light shines the brightest on her. If she's just in a normal tag match or a regular match, she's actually pretty good. But when she's in the spotlight, I don't know if she can handle all that all the bright lights. When the bright lights are upon her, things get highlighted, I guess. Oh, and by the way, talking about highlights, Kevin Dunn. You, you pervy camera person. Oh, my, my. Oh, heck, yeah. We saw so many crotch shots, like like spread eagle crotch shots. Whoa. Wait, normally, it's just like ass close-ups. I'll tell you what. Asuka was falling out a couple times, because every so often, you'd see a hand try to adjust something on Asuka. Or Asuka's hand tried to adjust herself a couple times. And you didn't see anything salacious. But, yeah, I think it's because Asuka caught herself. Um, one day, Sasha Banks is going to come out of her top. Though. I don't know. She has so many straps up top. But, yeah, I don't, Asuka didn't secure herself properly before the match. She was probably sad about Kyrie Sane leaving and, and Kyrie Sane getting killed, but that's a whole other. So we'll we'll get to that. Um, it's funny because then, well, not, not so much funny, but uh, Sasha Banks uh, begins to work over the knees, uh, the one bad leg of Oscar, and the half crab, the stump puller legs up, uh, go to break. Then Sasha Banks comes in. She tries to distract the ref. She puts both banks, both belts in the ring. The referee very quickly gets, so she just shows the woman's tag belt. She carries the woman's SmackDown belt in the ring. The referee shoves. Like, he just, like, kicks the woman's belt out of the ring. And, like, right in front of the ref, when, like, the referee is, like, literally staring at, at, at Sasha Banks, she literally throws the belt to Asuka and falls on the ground. The referee is like, I just saw you throw her the belt. You're, you're faking it. Get up. She's like, no, my head. She's like, no, I, I saw it. You did a terrible job of doing what Eddie Guerrero used to do. And it was just, it wasn't like, it was also, I don't know if it's part of the match, but she wasn't even trying. Because literally the left was staring right at her. And she's just like, whoop, there's the belt. Takes her bump, covers her head, and the referee's like, What the hell are you doing? I just watched you do that. Like, no, when my back's you can always see the ref say, You're supposed to do that when my back's turned. But yeah, so then he takes the belt. I'll give the the you know what? The WWE refs, even though they're refs and they're made of of glass and other highly breakable material. At least when they see stuff, they call it like it is. They're like, I just saw you do that. Why? That's that's stupid. Um, they're like, no, you out of here. And they don't really mouth off at the wrestlers either. They, they, they're, for the most part, they don't, they're not like Aubrey where they yell at people. Like they say, okay, here's your five count. One, two, Three, listen, I'm going to have to DQ if I get to five. Four, okay, listen, you have one more second to let go. And then I'll, okay, okay. And that's it. They don't get in their face and stuff. So the WWE referees, for the most part, they do the job of a referee. They're, for the most part, fairly impartial. I mean, for the most part, they, they do call it right down the middle. And they do their job, actually, pretty half good for being made of glass and act as if they should be covered by pillows for their own protection. So, good job, referee. You did what you were supposed to. If this was AEW, like, Aubrey would have been, like, staring at, at her. It's like, why did you do that? 
you can't. You, you, you're not supposed to do that. I'm going to yell at you and I'm going to physically berate you and I'm going to show everyone my red lipstick moving. No, that's, that's not how it should be. Enough about that, though. Uh, let's see here. Again, Sasha had this weird reverse. It's like this is reverse stuff over toehold. First time she did, like she, like she forgot how to do a step over toehold. It was just weird and awkward. And then she did that. She's like, "Oh, I did this again. Oh, I better work the ankle so I can make it look like something." It just, I mean, it doesn't look like it would hurt. It's a step over toe. Looks like it hurts. This is like, okay, bending the ankle like that. Yeah, that hurts. But the step over part, whatever. Uh, Oscar eventually hits like a semi GTS on her. That was pretty good. Again, Sasha used her boot to choke in the corner. Um, Asuka hits counters with a code breaker when Sasha Banks can flame off the top. She uh, Sasha at the knees. It was an ankle trap suplex by Asuka, which is really good in the hip attack. Uh, Banks actually has a headbutt. Again, she better be careful, although she delivered that probably that was probably the safest, one of the safest headbutts you probably ever saw because she just went like this. She had, did hit the frog splash, though. That was impressive. Asuka kicks out after a too sweet. Uh, let's see here. She did go outside. Asuka gets her leg trap drop onto the desk. It was a roll up into the bank counter into the bank statement. Um, Asuka tries, takes the Asuka lock after a flying drop kick, which looked amazing. But then Asuka was, was torn. And this is what kind of lost me at this match, besides the fact staring at, at, at show minis, spread eagle crotch shots, and Asuka trying to help herself get back into her outfit. Uh, Kairi, they showed on video cram, on the big Titan Tron, Kairi seeing getting absolutely mauled by Bailey. And Asuka was torn. Do I help my friend or do I win the belt? Eventually, she went to help Kyrie Sane. This is just an overbooked pile of stuff. This seems like, and I'm curious, is Vince Russo really there? Did they put Vince Russo in charge of booking at WWE? Because this smells like a Vince Russoism. Because um, Oscar went out to help Kyrie Sane. She gets counted out, so therefore Sasha Banks wins. Overall, it wasn't bad. That ending, though, it just... Ugh. It left a bad taste in my mouth. It'll be interesting to see what people say about it tomorrow. But I'll say it was a cheeseburger match. So then we get Asuka. We go to commercial break. We get Asuka. She's backstage. Poor Kyrie Sane's probably probably dead. She has brain contusions. Uh, and then, uh, and then oddly enough, we get Murphy versus Umberto Carrillo and Dalagas. Where was he when Alistair Black got his eye gouged out? Wait, where was Lena Vega when her husband got her eye gouged out? Indeed. Um, this was actually a pretty short... It was a pretty quick match. And when Umberto flies, he's so good. He has those fast, as people call, educated kicks. His kicks look good. I mean, at least he hides a thigh slapping, too. To a degree. Um, when he flies, he's so good. When he counters with his kicks, they're so crisp. They look like legit kicks. Murphy's, however, is a little too strong. He is a twist. He... Murphy's getting twisted now. He has that viciousness that Seth Rollins has instilled in him. Um, Berto, he tried a flying something uh, that was countered, though, by Murphy, by the knees of Murphy. Um, he hits the knees, and then eventually he hits Murphy's Law. Umberto tried. He tried to help his friend. This is a short match. Most of it, I think, took place during the break, during the commercial break. It was a ham sandwich of a match.
Then we have Drew McIntyre taking on Dolph Ziggler. And Drew comes out, cuts a promo. Again, we see that Randy Orton wants to take on Drew McIntyre. That's going to be one heck of a match if they do it right at SummerSlam, whenever that is. Um, let's see here. So Drew goes, he just goes for the steel chairs right away again because Drew made this an extreme rules match. Except for now, uh, except for Drew can do it too, and so can Dolph. Dolph, you can have an extreme rules match. Except for I get to have an extreme rules match too. Some Scrooge McDuck of the Clan McDuck. And I'm going to swim in a bed of quarters. Um, Dolph gets just beat on. He gets, well, he gets long darted right into the pe plexiglass. And he breaks the boards. Oh, that was awesome. Hockey. 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 I miss, I miss my ice hockey. I, I forget if the NHL is playing any games yet. I know the NBA has. But who was the Harding's being? I don't know. He doesn't want to wear his mask. I don't care about that. The one guy I forget who it was decided to go to a strip club. Now I know there are worse things you can catch in a strip club than coronavirus, but coronavirus is one of those things you should not be going to a strip club for. And I don't care how good their buffalo wings are. You don't go to a strip bar to. E. That's just weird. No. No. No! I don't care what the strip club culture in Atlanta is. That's weird. Ugh. I saw a guy do that once. It wasn't me either. It's like, dude, you're eating wings when that's up there? Let me move an extra seat away and enjoy my adult beverage while I stare at what's up there. Uh, so then, uh, so what happened next? So side rushing suplex as the kendo stick came out. Side rushing suplex with a kendo stick. He puts that kendo stick across the, the mouth of Dolph. Dolph eats kendo stick. And he launches chairs into ring. ECW! ECW! Then Dolph makes his comeback. Drew eventually uses a kendo stick again. If you can do it, if, if you're going to make me do it, I'm going to make you do it too. A Dolph on the apron spot. And then we had an OMG moment where Dolph Spear, like this is the most video game OMG moment ever. True spear, Dolph, through the timekeeper's barricade area, and the whole barricade system falls apart. I need to make I need to make that. I have to find that. I have to find an OMG thing to put up here eventually. An OMG moment thing. Be on my goddess too. I'll I'll debate about that later. Yeah, I need to get some you know start the process of this and get some sleep. Um, Drew, get, Drew again with the superplex is amazing. Dolph with the zigzag. No, nope, that's not enough. Dolph with the super kick is not enough. Uh, eventually, Dolph gets Claymore through a table. That's the end of the match. This was a good match. It kind of highlighted a lot of which probably should have happened at the horror show that was Extreme Rules. Um, and this being a very even Extreme Rules match. I thought it was good. It's whole story. Drew McIntyre, he's still good at trash talking. Dolph Ziggler is the most cartoonish seller in the world. So an Extreme Rules match for a cartoonish seller is just a perfect fit. And then out of nowhere, yeah, Randy Orton comes out. And RKO's Drew McIntyre. That was a good way to send us home. This was a surf and turf match. So ironically, Raw did the bookends thing. It had the very first match was good. The very last match was good. Everything in between was all muddled up. 
And they've done that before. I'm not necessarily happy with that either. But that was Monday Night Raw. The rest of the schedule this week is a pre plane schedule. Tomorrow I go back live for um, Impact Wrestling. Wednesday is going to be my AEW review. Thursday. Man, I can't do that then. Thursdays. Thursdays I'm off. Fudge it. Um, I can do that food review and, and mine is better anytime. Fridays, Red Wine and Pizza Smackdown. That's it. There's no wrestling this, this weekend. Yes. I do miss the live events, though. That's that, that itch to go back to a live event, interact with the wrestlers a little bit, interact with wrestling fans. Just something else to do in Daytona Beach because I'll tell you what, the coronavirus has zonked Daytona Beach because there's not much to do in Daytona Beach if you're working all the time and only have nights free. There's a beach, which is cool. I, I should get to the beach one day. The river's good. The fishing's good. But all the events, I think the only one thing I'm looking forward to besides working the races is Biketoberfest. And that's up in the air. Okay, we have a Biketoberfest show. But I don't know if they're going to have Biketoberfest. I should have to get her on the motorcycle, too. That's a whole other issue, folks. Everyone out there in YouTube land, have a good night. Because I'm a headbanger. And...